the Canon EOS R50. I'm gonna be real with you. This camera has some pretty big shoes to fill because it's the successor to the wildly popular Canon M50, which was one of the best selling cameras Canon ever made. And considering that they've added a ton of new features and priced it at only $100 more than the Canon M50, I think this is the best entry level mirrorless camera currently available. But there is one category of photographer and videographer that shouldn't buy this camera. And by the end of the video, you'll know if you fit into that category or not. But don't worry, it's literally like less than 3% of people. So here's the first thing that you should know about this camera. If you put the right lens on this bad boy and spend a little bit of time thinking through your lighting, you'll be able to produce images and videos that'll look like they were shot on a $5,000 camera. Don't let the size and the price of the R50 fool you. It's an extremely capable camera. For starters, you're getting a 24 megapixel sensor with Canon's Digic X processor. This will give you stunning photos and oversampled, uncropped, 4K video up to 30 frames per second. I started this YouTube channel with the M50 and the 4K was almost unusable because there was a massive crop and the camera would lose its ability to autofocus in 4K. But that's not the case with the R50 and that alone makes it worth the slightly higher price over the M50. But believe me, there's a whole bunch more that Canon added. The amazing dual pixel autofocus now gives you the ability to track not only human subjects but also animals and vehicles. There's also also a new product showcase mode where the camera will focus on any product that you hold up and immediately switch back to your face when you put the product down. Amazing for YouTubers and content creators like me. And if you're looking to get slow motion buttery b-roll, you can shoot up to 120 frames per second in 1080, which is nuts for a camera at this price point. There's also an option to shoot an HDR PQ, which gives you 10-bit color. What that does is allow you to color grade your footage and easily easily add custom LUTs to give you a more filmic, movie-like look. Here's some examples of my custom LUTs that I use for this channel. You can download these and use them on your photos and videos by going to my website, fulancreative.com. I'll leave a link in the video description below. Now if you're a beginner and all the talk about the fancy specs and other camera jargon seems confusing, don't worry at all because Canon cameras are the best cameras to learn on. The menu systems and the ease of operation are better than any other camera system that I've ever ever used and I've used a bunch. Everything is controllable through the touch screen and you don't have to use any of the dials or buttons to change the settings if you don't want to. Canon went out of their way to make the R50 easy to operate even for a complete newbie but the beauty of it is as you get more comfortable with your camera you can always change it to manual mode to give you full control over your exposure and other settings making the camera operate more like a pro camera. Overall I have to applaud Canon for the R50. It's taken all the great things about the M50, improved on them, and offered all of this at a very reasonable price. There's no other camera out there with all these specs, a fully touchable flip screen, a mic jack along with a multifunctional hot shoe connection that's priced well under a thousand bucks. That being said, one potential downside is that there's not that many APS-C lenses currently available for the RF mount, but that's easily solved using a simple and cheap adapter which allows you to use Canon's EF and EFS lens lineup which are not only affordable but high quality as well. The adapter I recommend is this one by Mica. It's not just a plain adapter, but it's also a variable ND filter. And if you don't know what a variable ND filter does, don't worry. All you need to know is that you're going to need it. And with this adapter, you get the ND filter along with the ability to use EF and EFS lenses. And it's only about 150 bucks. There's a few EFS lenses I really recommend, but the main one would be the 10-18 to because currently there's nothing that wide available in the RFS mount. And you'll need an ultra wide like that if you plan on doing any vlogging, wide landscapes, or real estate shots. I'll leave a link in the video description below to the R50 as well as the Mica adapter and the 10 to 18 ultra wide lens. I also made a list of the most affordable high quality items you'll need alongside your R50. Things like studio lighting, mics, tripods and more. So be sure to check that out. Oh yeah, and there's that one shortcoming I mentioned in the beginning of the video which a small percentage of you may be affected by. So Canon increased the max recording limit of the R50 to one hour whereas it used to be only 30 minutes on the M50. What that means is that once you record for one hour, you'll have to hit the record button again to keep recording. This isn't a big deal because most people shoot short clips and then piece everything together in the edit. But if you'll be using your camera to record long interviews, podcasts, 
podcasts or events, this could be an issue for you. In that case, you may want to spend a bit more and go with the Canon R10, which is an APS-C crop sensor camera priced at around 900 bucks. Or you could go with the full frame Canon R8, which is priced around 1500 bucks. Now, if you're not clear about the differences between a crop sensor and a full frame camera, I highly suggest you watch this video next where I explain in simple English the differences between full frame and crop sensor. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos and I'll see you in the next one. It's Fulan Creative and I'm out. Peace.